Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for six things that we learned from Chelsea 3, Leeds United 2. Funny that, I said it in my prediction, didn't I? Chelsea to beat Leeds by three goals to two, Mudrik to play in a brand new position, Chelsea get the job done, and to be quite honest, it feels weird. I'm happy that Chelsea are into the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. We've got Leicester at home, who are another championship side. So you look at that and you think to yourself, well, maybe Chelsea are on their way to Wembley again. However, when it comes to an FA Cup tie that you win by three goals to two, don't mind me while I struggle to be absolutely buzzing about what I've just seen, when once again, the performance is questionable at very, very best. However, we finished the game with, I think, eight or nine of the players that finished the match against Liverpool in the Carabao Cup. So when you're thinking about players and their fitness and all of that after just a couple of days ago, playing for 120 minutes and playing for a draw at Wembley, you look at that Chelsea team and you think, well, the fact that we get over the line is by far the most important thing. There were moments of individual brilliance in this game, but I think Clive Tildesley summarised exactly what the issue is with Chelsea right now when he was talking about Mudrik on the ball and he's caught in seven minds. When you look at all of these Chelsea players, each player individually, whenever they have the ball, it's very unlikely that they've already premeditated what they're going to do with it next. They're always getting the ball and then having to think about what to do. Nothing is seemingly instinctive for this Chelsea team, which I think is a real problem. And I think if all of your players are kind of caught between two minds, seven minds, as Clive Tildesley said on the ITV commentary, then, of course, things seem slow. Of course, movement is poor. And to be quite honest, all of these Chelsea players, all season long, as much as we get the job done here, I don't want this to be a fully negative video, but I'm going to talk about the performance and not just the result. I think Chelsea and Pochettino, he changed a lot of things today, probably because he knew that the fitness of certain players wasn't going to be quite up to scratch. He's worried about re-triggering certain injuries to certain players as well. But I think there needs to be some kind of continuity. And I said before the game, it's at a point where how many more changes can we see? We've seen a lot of different players play for Chelsea this season. We've seen the 4-2-3-1 used significantly more but I just think again today, when you look at that back line in the first half, Leeds United go ahead. It was a shambles. You got Sanchez coming back in for his first game since the 10th of December. You got Alfie Gilchrist, who obviously is delighted to be playing for Chelsea, but does he want to be on like this carousel of which defensive position he's going to be in next? There's no continuity. Players don't know until any given match day what position they're going to be in and what the formation's going to be and where they're actually going to be playing within that system. Because we're still trying to come to terms with what that system is. How are we supposed to be playing? And in the second half, Chelsea completely disappeared. If it wasn't for the brilliance of Cobham at the very end, with Conor Gallagher scoring his seventh Chelsea goal and his fourth goal in his last five games, by the way, if only he could have finished against Liverpool in the cup final at the weekend. Leeds went ahead though. Chelsea responded well. And I think in terms of the way that I want to talk about the balance of the game, I was surprised that we bounced back so strongly because to go 1-0 down, to be so deflated after that cup final, but then bounce back immediately, is exactly what we needed to do. Nicholas Jackson scores what, in my opinion, was one of Chelsea's best goals we scored this season. Brilliant movement. Madweki gives it to Caicedo, first time ball into Jackson, and that's Jackson's 10th goal of the season. The second, Mudrik, absolutely brilliant finish, playing in that number 10 role. People thought I was a bit stupid, potentially, in my match preview when I said, look, I think Mudrik is on the verge of everybody giving up on him. Play him as a number 10, where he seems like he gets less isolated he can be that explosive player arriving into the box. And he's not necessarily being asked to do everything with the ball at his feet to take players on. Because so far in Mudrik's Chelsea career, it has been a bit of an issue seeing Mudrik run at players. He's got all of that pace, but running into the player 
Similar to that of Raheem Sterling, really. Constantly running into players. But Mudrik as a 10 is a significantly better option for Chelsea. But anyway, going to get into these boxes right now. The first one, I'm giving a red to Robert Sanchez here. Didn't make a single save, I don't think. Maybe one save the whole night. But distribution. There seems to be like this weird narrative going around between the Sanchez's fans, let's say, at Chelsea, the people that want to see him as the number one, saying that his distribution is something that we've heavily missed at Chelsea. I don't see this narrative whatsoever. I think Petrovic's distribution is good. I think his energy with the back line is good. I think Sanchez always looks a bit nervous, like he's frightened to shout and tell his defenders in front of him what, they, what he wants them to do. I think Petrovic is a better goalkeeper. And again tonight, the sassy Sanchez for the first Leeds goal. I'm like, what the bloody hell is going on? But I'm just going to put it out there right now. Petrovic is my number one. And Sanchez didn't cover himself in glory tonight. Box number two is a green box for Mikhailo Mudrik. Playing as a number 10. I don't think it was his best game. But that finish was absolutely magnificent. But Chelsea 2-1 up at a time where we started to gain control of the game after Nicholas Jackson scored that goal. Great response. And then all of a sudden, once again, we lost control of the game. We seemed to slow down the pace. And Mudrik's goal comes just at the right time. We've been saying it all season long with Mudrik. We don't know what we're going to get game by game, but minute by minute as well. And towards the end of that second half, before he actually came off, well, the whole of the second half, as soon as he moved over to the left, he disappears again. And I don't know what it is. I could see it, and I'm just a fan who has an opinion and talks about it before and after games. But, like, I can tell that Mudrik on the left isn't going to do anything. But Mudrik through the middle, it is. And I'm not just going to keep on to, like telling you guys that I called this, but I did. And I'm going to move on from it right now. Box number three is for the match winner. The score of goal number three, Connor Gallagher. I thought Gallagher coming on looked sharp. I think he's one of those players who knew that he was absolutely not at his best in that Carabao Cup final and wanted to prove something. A couple of really nice touches in there as well. And in that second half, when Mudrik, as he seems to do, kind of drifts in and out of games in terms of importance and prowess on the ball and off the ball, but Gallagher was that only player in that second half at any given point that looked as though he was ready and willing to arrive into the box. When Chelsea are looking for outlets, it was Enzo and Gallagher right at the very end who come up trumps for us. And we've got Leicester at home now with an opportunity to make it into the FA Cup semi-finals. So massive goal from Gallagher, massive goals from Mudrig. But unfortunately, I hate to do this after we've just won and made it to a quarter-final. But there really isn't that many positives to talk about the performance. I've got to be realistic. A lot of people always say I'm a bit too optimistic and sometimes I'm too positive and we get too carried away with ourselves here. But box number four, I've also given a red to Trevor Chalobah. And I think the second goal, it's naive. There were also moments where Joseph could have got his hat-trick for Leeds where the ball seemingly goes through Chalobah's head. I don't understand. He's a tall bloke. He's a big defender. But sometimes it's like his height and his, his actual like stature just gets the better of him. And he doesn't really remember that in order to defend, you've got to nod the ball away, mate. There seems to be so much more. When Leeds score that second goal, you're looking around and you're thinking, I don't know if Chelsea are going to win this. Are we going to extra time again? Are we going to play for penalties against Leeds? Chalaba's mistakes... Not really convincing when it comes to seeing him potentially in the team moving on for the rest of the season. I think it's because obviously we played so many minutes in that cup final, but I thought Chalaba's days were numbered and it looks as though they maybe are. So box number five, I've given a yellow to Nicholas Jackson. I think the goal was absolutely fantastic. And as the six things we learned videos are going on, during the match, I've got my notes up on the screen. I've actually got the boxes, the colours and who I think is doing well with all my match notes. And I had Jackson as a green. And then as that second half went on, once again, I'm, I'm bringing it back to that Clive Tilsley comment where Mudrick was on the ball and he said he was caught between seven minds. Jackson is one of those players as well. 
where when he simply focuses on looking down and running with the ball, he's either going to bury it or he's going to run into trouble, run into players, and you're thinking, when is this, like, with all of these Chelsea players, because they're so young, we're going to be frustrated watching so many of them for so long. Let me tell you that right now. Because the issue is, when they're so young, and they're all having to grow together for something to work, there isn't enough quality experience that Chelsea can rely on, that Pochettino, who is box number six, and I've given him a yellow as well, it's a bold starting lineup, and it almost doesn't pay off. There's still no like serious, good quality, fluid attacking football. There isn't any serious patterns of play that we can be like, yeah, we, we've seen this developing, we've seen this being worked on. Chelsea got lucky tonight, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought we were poor, and we're into the quarterfinals, and that is six things we learned. I, I know it's a bit of an uninspiring six things we learned video. I'm sorry about that. But like, I'm uninspired by watching Chelsea. I really am. That is just the truth of the matter. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Subscribe to GBFC if you are new and haven't already done so. Come on, you blues.